God, we need a word from heaven. Right now. Somebody's in need of a blessing. Right now. If you ever needed God before you, you, knew, you, you really, really knew, do, you do. You knew. Right now. Uh, this is a time of salvation. Right now. God is speaking to every nation. Right now. If you ever needed God before God bless you. Today's encouraging word comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 26, and we we'll read verse number 51. And it says, And behold, one of them which were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck a servant of the high priests and smote off his ear. Amen. In this scripture text, amen, uh, Judas had come with a mixed mob uh, to arrest Jesus. And as that mob came upon them, uh, Peter uh, whipped out what the scripture text says is a sword and cut off the servant's ear. Amen. Uh, and it's an amazing thing to think about that Peter, uh, having walked with Jesus and fellowship with him intimately for over three years, was yet carrying a weapon. And when you look up this word sword in a lexicon or in Strong's Concordance, it truly is translated a knife. Amen. So when you think about it from that perspective, after three years of walking with Jesus, Peter was yet packing a knife. <laughs> we can laugh at that and say typical Peter, but many, in many ways it's typical Christian, amen, because there are many Christians today who are packing knives, amen. Uh, they're born again, they're in the church, but they're packing knives, amen, stabbing people in the back, uh, cutting to shreds the reputation and character of someone else through slander and gossip and lies, cutting people down to size, amen, and they're doing it with a knife, amen. Now the Bible tells us that the word of God uh, is the sword of the spirit, amen. And as Christians, if we're going to be using any weapons, that is what we should be using, the word of God. Amen. In fact, if you look in the book of Revelation, it says when Jesus spoke, uh, his tongue was like a two-edged sword. That word sword truly is the long weapon that we are accustomed to seeing. But Peter's sword was a knife. Amen. And so what we want to be mindful of as Christians, amen, is that we want to make sure we take up the, the right weapon. Amen. And if the Holy Spirit is coming to you today, amen, and and it's convicting you on this line because perhaps you have been using a knife, amen, going behind people's back, stabbing them in the back, amen, talking about them behind their back, amen. What you've been doing, amen, has been wielding a knife. And look what Jesus said to Peter as Peter whipped out his knife. Jesus said unto him, put up again thy sword. And we're going to, trans we're going to substitute the word knife here, amen. Watch what he says. Put up again thy knife into his place. For all that take the knife shall perish with the knife. Amen. And so we want to be very, very careful, amen, that we choose the right weapon. Remember, the sword of the Spirit is the Word of God. This, the sword that comes out of Jesus' mouth, amen, is truly a sword, amen, because it has the power to change. It's, it's anointed. But knives do not carry the same anointing. So if the Holy Spirit is coming unto you, amen, and, and perhaps convicting you, amen, because you might have been, like Peter, carrying your knife over the past couple of days, weeks, months, or even years, amen, simply go unto God and repent, amen, and let him know that you are ready to make a weapon exchange. Let him know that at this time, from this day forward, you are putting down your knife. And you are now ready to take up your sword. God bless you. Until next time, be encouraged. Amen. Remember that Jesus does love you. And his love never fails. It makes no difference what you're going through. It makes no difference. God knows.